Hey, joining us on the whale line, one of the founding members of Grand Funk Railroad, also wrote and sang on one of the band's biggest hits for an American band. Please welcome Don Brewer. Don, how you doing? I'm good, Doug. How are you? I'm good, man. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you this Saturday at Tioga Downs and Nichols. Don, when we talk about the song We're an American Band, which you wrote, sang lead on, and of course played drums on that, the song starts off with one of the most recognizable drum riffs in rock history. More cowbell, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's all about the cow cowbell and rock and roll, you know. Well, I don't know about that. I know many people have tried to pull off the beginning of that. Some maybe have accomplished it, but many have failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was always known for my right foot, you know. So it's all it's all a right footed kind of a thing, you know? and it, it is a very very odd feel to it. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. Well, it's a hell of a way to start off the song, anyway. Don, let's uh, get a little background on the group. You and singer Mark Farner, a couple of Michigan boys, played together in a previous band before you formed Grand Funk Railroad. Talk to us uh, about how the band formed and how you uh, put it together in its early days. Well, yeah, it came out of uh, a couple of different bands. You know, we had uh, we had been the Pack and Terry Knight in the Pack and all these other bands in Flint, Michigan, uh, for you know a number of years. And we were looking to make a change. You know, we had been a four piece, a five piece, so forth and so on. We wanted to continue on. Uh, but we didn't want to be a cover band. We didn't want to just do, you know, other people's stuff. We wanted to do our own own music, you know. So we took all of the things that we were doing. We enlisted Mel Shocker from Question Mark and the Mysterians, who was another local uh, Michigan act. And uh, got, we stole him, we like to say, uh, as bass player. And we, we put together this trio, you know, and we were fashioning the trio after Cream and Hendrix, you know, and all those bands that were big and popular at the time. And we were taking our R and B roots, you know, and uh, kind of pumping them up on steroids. And we came up with the name Grand Funk Railroad, uh, you know, after the Grand Trunk on Western Railroad in Michigan. And that's uh, that. That's how we, you know, got it together. We put all the pieces together, got out on the road, and became a, a really a touring band. That's what you know got us going. And you know, it was amazing. I just looked this stat up, and I didn't realize this, Don. From like the late '60s to the early '70s, your band had like seven albums in the top 30, and four of those were in the top 10. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, we pretty impressive. Yeah, you know, the first album I bought was We're an American Band, and I thought you guys were a brand new group. I hadn't heard of you before. Then I went back and listened to the live album and some of the earlier stuff and was just blown away. Yeah, uh, you know, I thought I thought a lot of the stuff that, you know, was kind of, you know, I, I don't say it was overlooked, but, it, you know, I think it was very well done. You know, I mean, it was real honest rock and roll. You know, it wasn't a whole lot of overdubs. It wasn't a lot of studio trickery. You know, it was very simplistic. Uh, you know, back then, that's what you did. You know, you were you just had to t- take what the band did, capture it on a on a recording, and put it out. It wasn't about all doing all of this flashy, uh, you know, recording stuff. You know, and I you know, I loved it. And Don, you have a great rock and roll resume to boot. Uh, and I had read that you actually played with Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. I you know I still do. You know, I mean, uh, I started uh, doing uh, you know kind of a a second job kind of thing back in the 80s, you know, I did a couple of tours with uh, the Silver Bullet Band back then, and then uh, in 2006, Bob decided he wanted to, you know, get back on the road, and, uh, you know, I've been touring with them, you know, whenever they're out there, you know, it's usually every couple of years uh, that they go out and do a tour, and uh, they, they usually tour in the winters, Grand Funk tours in the summer, so, uh, you know, those are busy years for me when I'm doing both bands, but yeah, I, I'm still doing that, too. That's kind of cool to have that for a secondary job, you know? It's great, yeah, it's a, not a bad night job. Not at all. Talk to us about the current tour. About uh, I know you have Mel Shocker with you, right? Yeah, Mel Shocker, myself, and Mel Shocker, founding members of Grand Funk, uh, along with some great guys that we've been touring with now for 17 years. Uh, Max Carl from 38 Special is singing lead for us. Max is the guy that sang and wrote 38's biggest hit, Second Chance. Uh, he, and for those of you who can remember back in the 80s, you know he was in Jack Mack and the Heart Attack. He was Max from Jack Mack and the Heart Attack. I like to say he's probably one of the last blue-eyed soul singers on the planet. He's just a great front man for Grand Funk. Also got Bruce Kulick, who played lead guitar with Kiss for 12 years when they took their makeup off. And Bruce is an old friend of ours from the 80s. Uh, got Tim Cashin playing keyboards and singing backup with us. Uh, Tim has been with Bob Seger as well as Robert Palmer and many other guys. Great. Uh, it's a great band. you know. And like I say, we've been uh, doing... Doing the show that we're, we're kind of doing now, uh, we've been working with this band now for 17 years. Great show. And with that lineup, man, if that doesn't draw people in, I don't know what would. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a terrific band. And, you know, and, and, you know, you put on top of that, the, you know, the Grand Funk catalog, and it's just great. You know? I'm sure it's a great show, lots of energy. Are you going to wear your red, white, and blue hat? I do. I always do. <laughs> That's Hey, i got to ask you, um, and you have so many different things that you've done throughout your musical career, and you're still continuing to do that. What are some of your biggest moments? Anything that stands out? Well, certainly Shea Stadium. You know, when we sold out uh, Shea Stadium faster than the Beatles, 
We also, when we played uh, Tokyo, uh, a baseball stadium in Tokyo, in the middle of a typhoon, uh, and the people stayed. You know, the, the rain was blowing sideways, and we're up there playing on stage, and, uh, <laughs> you know, the audience was there. You know, I mean, un- unbelievable. Incredible, but I'm sure frightening at moments. All right, so Grand Funk Railroad, Tioga Downs, this coming Saturday, 8 p.m. Tickets on sale, Ticketmaster Outlets, and the Tioga Downs gift shop as well. And fireworks after the show and proceeds from the show will benefit the Southern Tier Veterans Support Group to help vets in our area here. So, Don, we thank you for that, too. Yeah, thank you, Doug. We appreciate it. And uh, anything in closing you'd like to say to the listeners? Oh, just come on out, have a good time. We like to get everybody up on their feet, sweating and smiling and having a good time. <laughs> we'll be rocking with the Grand Funk Railroad. Come see us Saturday, August 13th. Don Brewer, thank you so much. Thanks, Doug. <laughs>